and welcome back to Along the Creative Road with Wendy Brightbill. I'm so excited to share the following video with you. This video is actually an excerpt from my course Deeper Still, which is an abstract painting course. It's one of my all-time favorites because I love playing with abstract painting. It's one of my favorite things. And this course is so thorough and it's just packed full of content. But this video is all about different ways that you can begin your abstract painting. It's just a small video that is part of a huge comprehensive course and if this is something that you're interested in please stay tuned at the end of the video i'm just going to go ahead and read you the course description enjoy Hi guys, today I really just want to talk about starting points. I know that starting points can be tricky, especially for people who are just coming into this painting creative practice, right? And for those of us who have been painting longer, sometimes we get stuck in a rut, right? We have the same way that we start all of our paintings and we get, kind of get comfortable in our process. I, I know I do and oftentimes that can create almost like a stagnation in my work and then ends up being this place where I'm constantly starting with the same materials, supplies, process, whatnot. And then my work is just all the same, right? And so I just want to challenge you, if you've been painting a while, to kind of mix it up, right? Think about how you can start differently. If you always start with watercolors on watercolor paper, maybe buy some of this mixed media paper. They make it in all different colors. This is toned tan. And, and start from a different vantage point, right? Start with uh, a color. Sometimes if you will just paint your substrate a completely bright color or a color that you don't normally use, then you could kind of mix it up a little bit. And, you know, then it, it evolves into something way, way cool. So, I just want to challenge you with that and really just think about different ways that you can start a piece. With all of the mixed media pieces that that we've been doing, the, or sorry, I don't mean to say that. When I break down some of the basic techniques in the art lab, I talk about, you know, all of these different techniques well, what's really kind of cool about it is that you can layer them in different ways and really just mix the mix it up in that way and change change how you do things and you might actually find a new process that shifts your work into a new place that it's never been before. So, I and I'm just going to start painting. I, for whatever reason, was painting something the other day and was using this indigo. 
and it just made me happy. So I thought, you know, in terms of, gosh, I want to kind of mix things up a little bit and I am going to start this piece by painting a big indigo shape on this toned tan paper. And I'm gonna let this be something totally different, totally new, because I'm changing my starting point. Now, if you're new, and this whole thing sort of intimidates you, like you have the fear of the white canvas, this is where you really just start painting. You have to start somewhere. And sometimes just getting some paint down is the first step. Okay, so I am just gonna go to the edges like that. I kinda like it a little bit more of a dry brush in places, but I wanna leave somewhat of an outline and the tanned, the toned tanned, the toned tan paper showing around the edges. And this kind of goes back to, I really am feeling the need to explore almost like this. I really need to change my water. It's like, it's just mud now. I wish someone would invent like the best way to clean your brushes. That I think is one of the things that I really dislike about acrylic paint is the the sludge water that you get and how it like starts to smell over time. Ugh. Not my favorite thing. So as I did that, I was kind of thinking, I wonder if I just scratched a few lines and I think I waited too long to do that. I should have done it right when I got the paint down. But that would be something that's really fun to start a piece off with, right? I wonder if another tool That's a little bit better. I thought it would be kind of cool because it would be a little bit contrasting, but it's kind of just almost textural, which is fine. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let this acrylic paint dry and then I'm going to come back later with a different mindset. And I think what, what I'm going to do is kind of just continue to almost add like random marks and lines and colors and whatever I feel drawn to add to this piece gradually, because I think that it sort of changes your mindset when you can leave and come back and leave and come back. You see things in a new way when you do that. And it's like when you spread it out a little bit more, it like totally changes the way that you look at a painting. You know, sometimes I'll come back to a piece like the next day and I'll be like, I hate this. And then I'm looking at it like a week later and I'm like, I love this. Like, there's something like magical happening. So 
the perspective I think is key. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna come back at a later time. Hi guys, remember we were just talking about how we start out different pieces. And I just wanna say, I am actually really excited about working on this piece and kind of where I envision this going is possibly some white line work with my white gel pen and I'm almost imagining some type of abstract floral. So I think that this is kind of a, a fun way to start a piece with a solid color. I'm, I often do that for some of my floral pieces. And I always think it's interesting because when you start out with one solid color, it really informs your work in a different way, right? So I I could absolutely see myself doing almost like a, a botanical sketch on this blue with my white gel pen. And I think that Just by switching up how I be how I start a piece, it really informs the whole creation process, right? And so I could come in and start adding some, you know, some other shapes on top of this. There's so many things and so many different directions that this piece could go in. But my whole entire point is that just by kind of switching up the way that you start a piece, it can open things up to you in a different way and you can explore abstracts and from a different sort of a different approach right another thing that i like to do to sort of start off a piece is sometimes i will just have my palette of paint and i just need to kind of use up that paint so sometimes i'll just take my paintbrush and really just kind of get rid of all the paint on my palette. That also makes for some interesting type of compositions, right? Might even just add a little bit more of that. see what other colors do I have over here um I don't know if that is leftover paint or not that one's almost dried up but I seem to get just a little bit of that so yeah, just by using up the paint that's on my palette, that will give me a completely different look as well. I like this aqua minty color on this paper.
Another way that you can start a painting is by just adding lines on your paper, on your canvas. I always like using the white gel pens on this toned tan, toned tan mixed media paper. So I can do something like this and just keep it I mean, the more I put on here because it's kind of lighter, it's almost going to feel like a texture. And what's cool about doing something like this is that I can add paint over the top of this, but I can then leave some of these lines showing through in the background, right? You can also take, let's say I wanted to take some of my pastels and even, you know, do some mark making. That's kind of cool because going over the the white gel pen for whatever reason, it's almost doing like a resist, which is really kind of crazy. So I can do something, you know, like this and start my piece with almost like some loose, messy scribbles, you know? So my whole point is just that when you switch up the order in which you are creating your pieces, you can really dive into creating in a completely different way. Look at how cool that is. Man, our my, what was I gonna say? Pastels are extremely messy, but that was a, this one was a Neo Color 2, right? And so I can get that wet. I think this one might, I think this is a, a new pastel, so that also can get wet, right? Sometimes just working super fast and seeing what you can do in a short amount of time, you know, just be like, okay, I am just gonna make some really loose, expressive lines and then I'm gonna stop, you know? Oh, this is, this one is the dropper that's all dried up. And sometimes by just putting that kind of constraint on yourself that you're just gonna go super fast.
painting with your fingers, you know, making a mess, stepping outside of the box. You know, and then you can even like do the same thing to pieces at the same time, right? So let's say I wanted to add some scratchy lines to this as well. And I just want to point out, you know, all of these suggestions that I'm giving you right now is really just my ideas for how you can switch things up, make things more random in your work, because these are th things that I have really learned over time as far as, okay, how can I make this look and feel a lot more random right now, right? And that I think is the goal. And sometimes, oftentimes, we overthink abstract painting. And so, the more you can cultivate this place of just play, being more random, switching things up, and all of the above, I think it's going to make you a much better abstract artist, right? And so, I don't know, these, are, these pieces might not like might be completely different when I finish them. Whoops, I just got my uh, white pen into the black ink. That's really kind of funny. Anyways, so hopefully you are inspired by really just creating in a carefree manner and I feel like I need to scribble on this because now it feels too neat. And maybe I'll add, remember, I'm trying to loosen up. I'm trying to make a mess. And that's what this is all about. Random marks, random lines, playing with different compositions, different ways of starting. Hopefully you're inspired to go make a mess, to go start in a different way than you normally do. So as promised, I'm just gonna go ahead and I actually just printed it out and I'm gonna just read you the course description for Deeper Still, which is my abstract painting course. And I will also leave a link in the details for this video on how to find this course so that if you wanna join, go ahead and join. So deeper still, why is abstract painting important work? 
How do you make a deep emotional connection with your work? How do you find your own rhythm and language when you sit down to paint? How does painting help you move through grief or healing or growing pains? How do you know what needs to come out of you? Abstract painting is unique in that it removes the need to be anything. There is so much more freedom to explore a theme that is calling to you. You must connect with your work on an emotional level to some degree, or it doesn't work. This isn't necessarily true of other genres. I can paint a landscape and be completely indifferent about it. But when I paint an abstract painting, I have to be all in. I think this is what scares us the most about abstract painting. We have lost our creative voice along the way, and we don't know where to find it. We don't even know how to find our creative voice because it requires quiet and slowing down to listen. And we are as a culture addicted to busy. It can be extremely uncomfortable to get quiet. I believe that it was Sabrina Ward Harrison who said that we paint the thing that we need the most. And I believe this to be true in my life. During certain seasons, I feel the need to paint different types of paintings. For example, I feel the need to paint with a lot of white paint and negative space at the moment. When I wrote this, um, I want light whispers and delicate lines. I think that this is because I want to give myself room to breathe and heal. But a year ago, I wanted to paint a whole bunch of dark, colors because I was looking for something to ground myself. If I don't listen to the thing that is calling me forward, then I won't have an emotional connection with my art. I would suggest that if abstract painting hasn't worked for you in the past, it might be because you only have ever copied someone else's expression or process. You have missed the most important part of abstract painting a deep emotional connection to your work. And I want to help you find that connection. During this course, I want to model for you how you can make this emotional connection in order to make your most important work. It's about pursuing a feeling, not ever arriving, but loving the process. Are you all in? Join me for Deeper Still, an invitation to abstract painting. There are three parts to the course, inner workings, process, and art lab. I want to come at abstract painting from several different directions because there's so much that goes into creating a dynamic abstract painting. Inner workings is the passionate drive that is, be that is happening behind the scenes. This section is the part where I discuss why I feel drawn to certain types of work. If you feel overwhelmed by the soul work, it's okay. Making these connections doesn't happen overnight. I painted for years before I understood why I felt the need to paint certain things. But even now, I don't always know why I feel drawn to paint in a certain way. This is a long, description, but it's good. There's a mystery to it all because art should always flow from your gut. I can't explain it any other, I can't explain it other than a deep knowing, but the important part is to just start flowing or following the hints when you are creating. For example, what type of artwork are you drawn to? What process have you fallen in love with and why? What feels the most satisfying when you are painting? What is inspiring to you today? What color are you continually being drawn to? Please note, this is not a static concept. It, it, it's constantly changing and evolving. The things that I felt drawn to paint yesterday may not be what I need to paint today. In order to be a creative person, you have to be willing to move and grow and change. This is the essence of abstract painting, in my honest opinion. Also, you don't need to have some big, powerful, 
why to start your creative practice. You discover it along the way. That's the coolest part of painting abstracts. It doesn't have to be anything. Sometimes it's just about the joy that you get smushing paint around on the canvas. Process is the part of the course where I let you watch as I create pieces that I feel drawn to paint. So now I'm talking about the second part of the course. This section is how is the how do I move through a painting. This is where I give you a peek at how I approach each piece of abstract painting. This is where you get to see the techniques in action to put together a whole painting. There is often there is very often a struggle that happens throughout the process of painting. Sometimes I begin with a very specific intention but struggle to meet it. This is where the editing process comes into play. Where does this piece fall short? How can I make it better? Do I need to come to terms with the fact that this piece doesn't meet the intention that I started with? Does the painting just need to be something else? Then I often move into a revision stage that I, so that I can start again with a revised intention. What was the last piece lacking? How can I start again? For example, does the piece need to be more simplified? Do you feel drawn to more subtle line work? Does it need to be bolder? And in this way, you all are already onto the next piece. And then this is the third section. I think I talked about, yeah. The third section is Art Lab. Art Lab is the part of the course where I give you some tools this section is the part where I give you the what of mixed media painting. I have never done a separate section like this before where I break down for you some of the basic steps and techniques that go into my pieces. This section is designed especially for beginners to mixed media art. This is also for people who learn better by seeing all the individual steps that might go into any particular painting. What I love about breaking it down in this way is that you can take different elements and combine them in infinite combinations. This way you can take elements that you love and make them your own. And I think that's really important in taking any online art classes. It's really good to take one or two like techniques or processes and internalize it and make it your own. Okay, now I just lost my spot. Okay, ultimately the goal is to get you painting in a way that feels organic to you. Please be patient if you are just beginning on this journey. It takes time to find your creative voice. We are all at different points in our creative journey. I believe that we all have a unique expression of creativity, one that is divinely unique. It's part of our DNA. And I believe that if you're willing to get quiet and listen, then you will be able to tap into the still small voice that will move you closer into that expression. So that is the whole course. There's three parts. Inner workings, we talk about intentions, exploring themes, starting points, editing pieces, revise and begin again. And then the second part is process. And that's where I take you through, I believe there's four different pieces that I let you inside of my process for creating. And then the third and final section of this course is called Art Lab. And that's where I give basic mixed media techniques, mark making, layers, prompts, and guided painting. So if that sounds like something that is tugging at your heart str strings, I would love to have you join me in Deeper Still, an invitation to abstract painting. Thanks if you made it this far, that was a long description and I hope you enjoyed the whole video.